I have uh, I know I've I've commented on on the uh, the the uncommentable like this is this is a person that you're not supposed to have any sort of criticisms about if you're especially if you if you are a Democrat, then then that is something that uh, a lot of Democrats do believe. But I got to I got to say, I got a lot of problems with uh, with Barack Obama, with the old hope and change there. Uh, he's been in the news recently. Again, uh, I should say, he's been in the news recently again. Um, this time he's in the news because he uh, has basically t- uh, called defund the police a snappy slogan. And is basically saying, we got to cut it out with this defund the police stuff because uh, it loses elections. People don't want to hear it. It loses elections. Uh, no, the, the reason why any Democrat lost their, their election uh, in in the, uh, the the Senate, right, uh, or the or the House of Representatives in Congress, is because they weren't progressive enough. That's why. I mean, the Democrats lose most of their votes on progressives because they try to cater to the right. They try to take votes away from the Republicans, and thereby becoming Republicans themselves. That's part of the problem with the Democratic Party in and of itself is that it is not the party of good. It's not the party of. Uh, of of nice people or or any of that, they might be more polite than the Republicans in pushing their uh, crypto fascist neoliberal economic policies and their crypto fascist neoliberal uh, legislative policies, but they're not better than the Republicans. And this is one of those things. This is not the first thing Obama said to try to squash a movement, and that is what he's doing here by by debasing and. Uh, devaluing the defund the police movement which is part of the black lives matter movement he's he's trying to delegitimize it he's trying to let you let, let people know well this isn't a good movement it we're losing elections because of this movement even though you didn't joe biden won the election uh and he won the election you know barely he barely won the election there were still fucking 70 million votes over over 70 million votes for Trump. So uh, the you know, the Democrats want you to think that it was it was going to be a blowout, but it really wasn't. The point being here is that if you paid attention to to anybody saying to fund the police, if anybody arguing uh, for for defunding the police. Then you know what that movement is about. Police departments across the country, like New York City, for example, the NYPD, uh, their police budget is six billion dollars. Why do you need that? And what did we see the New York Police Department do this year? They used uh, a, a police SUV as a battering ram against protesters. And this is what you don't want to get rid of. And Obama had an opportunity to get rid of police brutality or, or rein it in in some way because in 2014 was when Ferguson happened. And what did we see then? We saw the same level of police brutality that we saw uh, in city after city after city earlier this year. It was the same sort of stuff. We saw journalists getting attacked by the cops for covering uh, cops brutally attacking protesters. And Obama could have come in and say, you know what, we're going to we're going to look at this logistically and try to implement some community based issues across the country. We're going to restrain violence in the police department. We're going to put stringent laws in place that if you are a police officer and you kill an unarmed individual. Then you're going to face the consequences of murder. But but we didn't, right? And part of this start. It, it, I don't know how much of this is particularly linked to the fact that um, there was a Black Lives Matter protester that was killed in Louisville, right? A prominent Black Lives Matter protester that was killed in Louisville. Of course, Barack Obama doesn't have anything to say to that. He doesn't have anything to say about that. The tragic death of a 21 year old organizer, this kid that was excited about this movement that was being built that hundreds and thousands and millions of people were excited about to the point where the entire globe joined in on it. Obama has nothing to say about that. 
he does have to say that defund the police is a snappy slogan that gets people to not want to be part of the Democratic Party. Well, the Democratic Party doesn't want to defund the police. The reason why you lose is because you're not progressive enough. Maybe you would have won if you if some of your candidates would have been like, yeah, I think we should look at more community based issues, community based I I initiatives. But it's specifically meant to squash the issue. It's specific specifically meant to say, don't criticize us for not wanting to do this. We need law enforcement because they protect our stuff. They protect rich people's stuff. That's what law enforcement does. Under Obama, not only did you have Ferguson, but you also had uh, the, the protests in North Dakota against a pipeline. And cops were used to protect the pipeline as they use unorthodox weapons on activists. I mean, this is this is this is a farce. <laughs> this is a fucking farce is what it is. And that's what that's what the government system is, especially when you have former politicians coming out and saying, oh, the largest civil rights movement this side of the decade is uh, is just a snappy slogan. And th again, this is this is not the first time something like this has happened. Right. Uh, earlier this year, uh, Barack Obama told Black Lives Matter to protesters to stop yelling. Well, can you get the cops to stop murdering innocent people? Can you do something about systemic racism? You had the opportunity to. You you held the highest office in the land. And you turned out to be a massive disappointment, Barack Obama. He told basketball players to stop striking over the same issue. I mean, this is one of the biggest oversights in his presidency, and it's and it's followed him through all the way to now. You think Joe Biden is going to be able to handle the? No, Joe Biden wants to fund the police even fucking more. To help them train or. Yeah, let's give let's give the overfunded militarized police more money and tell them, hey, could you maybe shoot them? Can you maim your victims? Can you maim innocent people? That is acceptable. We don't we just don't want you to kill them because then they go out and they're doing the yelling and the things and they got these snappy slogans and ugh, it's just a mess. You know. That's Biden's plan. And Joe Biden is responsible for what is to, or rather, Barack Obama is responsible for what is to come with the Biden administration. Obama is the one that uh, got all of the other candidates to, all well, all the corporate candidates to, to essentially stop running so that they could levy all of their, you know, their their money and their power into into Joe Biden who wasn't doing well, he won fucking South Carolina, and that's about it. It was a runaway primary for for, for Bernie Sanders, and what did Obama say he was going to do? If, Ber if it looks like Bernie's going to take it, I'll step in and stop him. And that's what he did. He stepped in and stopped him. He, he got all of the other candidates to pull out and back Joe Biden. And the only two that didn't do that after... Super Tuesday, I think, yeah, was Bernie and Tulsi. Tulsi got barred from being on the stage despite the fact that she met all of the DNC's arbitrary claims. And Bernie, well, you know, what are you going to do? You got to have an opponent up there. And eventually Bernie conceded and Tulsi conceded. And they all fucking, that was a disappointment. But the fact that the entire Democratic playing field was wiped clean after South Carolina, the only fucking primary that Joe Biden could pull off, was because Obama made a call. And and they probably got some deals, right? Uh, maybe they'll get a position somewhere in the cabinet. Maybe they'll get some kind of 
uh, contributor. I mean, that's what happened to Andrew Yang. He's, he's now a CNN contributor. Something. Okay, we're offered something. Maybe. I don't know. All of this is on top of his already horrendous record. And his record's not very good. I mentioned Dapple and, and, and police brutality. There's also the housing collapse. There's a failing health care system because he's still connected it to employment. He's still connected it to the insurance companies. He's still connected it to big pharma. He didn't get rid of any of that. And there is something within, within the Affordable Care Act that he built where people can get Medicare for all. There's a loophole that if you are a victim of an environmental disaster... Everybody gets Medicare for all. Well, guess what? Right now, we're in the middle of an environmental disaster, not just because of climate change, which which was perpetuated thanks to the Obama administration for coming out and paying lip service to climate change and then approving more drilling in the Arctic. We, we, well, people don't live there. Fuck the Arctic foxes. But he came out and said, well, climate change is bad as he then signs off approval for Exxon to go drill. Drill, baby, drill. But we're in the middle of a pandemic. And, th and this pandemic is should be a no-brainer for, for the entire Democratic Party to be like, yeah, we're going to just approve Medicare for all, for everybody. Everybody gets health care. Don't worry about the insurance costs. We'll get it. No, but what did, what did Hillary... Like, Hillary Clinton came out over the summer... Uh, maybe in like April or May or something, and was just like, well, you know, the healthcare industry, and it's like the healthcare industry makes billions of dollars. They're going to be fucking fine. You know who's not going to be fine? The family of four who uh, both parents can't go to work, have had their uh, their their pay and their hours cut because they're telecommuting, and they can't put food on the table, and they have to still worry about having health care. From all I've seen, really the only thing Barack Obama is doing and really the only thing Barack Obama seems to be doing um, is trying to dissuade people from joining a movement to, to drive real change. If basketball players would have continued that strike and it would have flooded into other sports... Holy shit. This, I mean, people would have lost their fucking minds because, oh man, now you have to learn about the ugly truth of American capitalism and neoliberalism. That's, that's the reality. They might learn that ugly truth. So dissuade them from any movement that tells them otherwise. And that's what Obama is doing. And the reason why we like Obama is because, what, he's attractive? He speaks nice? He can form legitimate sentences? <laughs> Which is where the bar is for the Democratic Party. Is like, can you form a full sentence? Then your presidential material. Awesome. Can you go on television and spout out some platitudes without it being racist, which Joe Biden barely passed, by the way. <laughs> what Barack Obama really is, is a propagandist. He's coming out and he's essentially lying about the industry. I mean, a year ago, he started it. A year ago, he was coming out and telling young activists to be quiet. No, I, Obama, I think it's time for you to shut the fuck up. I mean, like resoundingly, just shut the fuck up, man. You had your eight years in the limelight. Your record is terrible. You had a kill list. You got us from two wars to seven. You created a housing crisis where millions of people uh, became homeless and you couldn't fucking help them out. Instead, you bailed out the banks, which, again, they did that shit again this year, too. Nobody needs to hear from you anymore. Especially when all you're going to do is try to squash movements. That's really all he's doing.
He wants to call defund the police a snappy slogan. You know what's a real snappy slogan? Hope and change, which is something that you ran on and didn't fulfill. There was no hope and there was no change that came out of what from, from the Obama administration at all, at all. There was hope and change for the elites. You know, fingers crossed the working class will stay asleep so we can keep changing laws to take away their rights. That's the real hope and change right there. Hello, Mona. It's good to see you. Thank you for being here. Uh, yes, yeah, picking between healthcare or food shouldn't be what the working class needs to worry about. Absolutely. Uh, that's Sophie's choice of uh, food or um, food or healthcare or food or rent or any of those uh, horrific Sophie's choices that we've been asked to make uh, in the face of a global pandemic uh, is not what we need to face, is not what we should be facing. Uh, it, and and having a government system that that does ask us to do something like that is is awful and is wrong. Um, and nobody should be for a politician that is making that argument. That is saying that we'll we'll hand out more money to corporations. We'll we'll uh, ease restrictions on corporations during a pandemic, and uh, maybe they'll give some back to the people. But no one really knows. And uh, if you're gonna go out in the streets and protest about it, you can go fuck yourself and russia you know like that's that's not you shouldn't be behind any candidate that does that you shouldn't be behind a political party that does that and yes uh biden is biden struggles to uh man now he's like a like he 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 got hurt playing with his dog like that's uh, you're not doing okay. Th 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 this is exactly why we need age limits for the office of uh, the president, for, for any office, period, right? Like, you 65 and you're done. between like, And then drop the age to 30, right? Like, if you're 30, you can run for president. If Once you turn 65, sit down and go fish somewhere for a while. Like, cognitively, he's not doing well. Physically, he's not doing well. Like, this is not good. <laughs> Hey, what's up everybody? Thank you guys so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed the content in this video, make sure you like, subscribe, and share. My content is highly suppressed because this is not topics of conversation that uh, that the corporate mainstream media really wants to, to, to address here. So make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Uh, sign up for my email list. Uh, uh, that way you'll get weekly uh, uh, emails with all of the podcasts and all of the videos that I put out there. Um, and make sure you go to my website and follow me there, uh, krishmohanhaha.com. That's going to be your one-stop shop for all things Krish Mohan. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. See you in the next video.